Hey friends, it's time for another custom Thomas Wooden Railway model video, and today's star is Glenn the Coffee Pot Engine. Now, before I go any further, I want to apologize in advance if I accidentally call Glenn Glenn. Apparently, there is a big difference, so apologies in advance if that happens, but I will do my best to say Glenn as much as I can. But anyway, uh, Glenn here rose to fame when he was introduced in the 2015 Thomas and Friends movie The Adventure Begins and actually he has appeared in a couple of episodes after that movie which came to a surprise at least for me uh, but anyway I want to give a big shout out to Hiro the Japanese Train who made this custom for me he actually modeled it after one that he made for himself way back in 2015 when The Adventure Begins came out um, and I really like what he's done here and I'm going to do my best to kind of explain the thought process and the part and pieces used for Glenn here because it's not as easy as it looks. So anyway, for those who don't know, Glenn is a coffee pot engine. I know a little bit about Thomas and Friends, but I did not know there was such a thing as a coffee pot engine. But basically, the long and the short of it is that before Thomas and his, fr uh, uh, Thomas and his friends ran uh, the island of Sodor, there were these coffee pot engines that would run around doing most of the jobs. That was when the, uh, the Sodor Railway, the Northwestern Railway, was a lot smaller so that these engines didn't have to be these big huge honking machines like Gordon or Henry for example and they never appeared in the railway series but they were mentioned in kind of a follow-up book that the Reverend made when he was kind of um, articulating the uh, history of the island of Sodor so that's why we never saw him in any um, like series or books or anything like that is because they were honestly kind of an afterthought but the Reverend writes about them as if you know there was a thing I just didn't decide to write about them because they weren't very interesting. So for the longest time, the coffee pots were only known to like die hard, hardcore Thomas and Friends fans because, you know, they didn't have any pieces of merchandise. Obviously, they weren't featured in the railway series or the TV series or anything like that. So unless you were specifically looking for information about Sodor's history, you would have no idea that these guys existed. However, that all changed in 2015 when the adventure begins and Glenn here um, is supposedly the original number one coffee pot and so there's a very short exchange at the end of the movie where Thomas is like I'm the number one engine and Glenn is like oh I used to be the number one engine and that was kind of it um, so a lot of us joked at the time oh poor Glenn he's gonna be left in a siding or you know what basically what happened to Glenn after all those years because the adventure begins takes place at the beginning of the TV series and the railway series and the TV series you know there's so many years past that so it's like oh Glenn probably got scrapped or forgotten about but the TV series actually Actually pulled kind of a 180 on us and they were like no Glenn's coming back so I think there's an episode where Marion accidentally discovers him and then Glenn is actually restored and he goes to work on the Earl's estate um, which is the castle up at Ulfstead and he appears in a couple of episodes most notably I think there's a Christmas episode and it may be the same episode I can't remember but there's also an episode where he races with Steven so anyway that's enough about Glenn's history let's get into the actual model here that here the Japanese train made for me so the base here first off I'm gonna go I'm gonna flat out say Go and watch Hero the Japanese Train's uh, custom video on the one he made for himself. He made it right after he saw The Adventure Begins, and I really believe it is a, it is a really nice piece. Um, he used a lot more detailing pieces than he did on mine, and that was on purpose. Um, for example, he uses like little Lego studs for buffers, and his kind of, I'm guessing this is the boiler area, was a lot more intricate and complex. But when um, Hero the Japanese Train and I were talking about what this custom was going to look like, I told him, and he agreed because he does this with a lot of my customs he wants them to fit in with all of the other wooden railway engines that I have he doesn't want to make this super complex you know beautiful looking custom but it's totally going to stand out and you're going to say oh that's obviously not a licensed Thomas Wooden Railway product it's way too detailed so for this one here the Japanese train kind of dialed it back a bit however a lot of the basics remain the same especially the face the face here is extremely accurate and we are just so fortunate enough enough to have gotten a piece of merchandise long before Glenn was ever even thought of. Um, and this is Thumper. This is where the face comes from. I can't believe how accurate the face is. The only difference is that Thumper's face is a bit curved and Glenn's face is more rectangular. But honestly, the expression 
and the nose and everything is, is right on par. It's pretty incredible. So when it comes to making a Glen Custom, it's kind of been unanimous, uh, unanimously decided that this is really the only face that's going to do it. You know, you could try something for like Boko or, you know, there's, there's very few rectangular faces. And I found that out when I was looking uh, for a face for my custom Bradford. I realized, wow, there are not a lot of long rectangular faces in the uh, Thomas Wooden Railway line. So you kind of have to take what you get. But Thumper here is the perfect custom. So what I did is I found a Thumper on eBay that was missing its treads and was kind of beat up. So I sent that to Hero the Japanese Train for the face. And then he kind of handled the rest. And what he ended up doing, and this is just kind of verbatim from his own custom video, there was a piece of rolling stock out there called, I believe it's the Apple Orchard car. And it came in um, a pack back in like 2004, 2005. It was called Coley and the Apple Orchard cars. And it's a weird pack. It comes with the second version of Coldy with the plastic side plates and it comes with a um, an apple orchard car and it comes with like for lack of a better term it's like a hopper car no no no, no I'm sorry I'm thinking of the same thing I'm thinking of it's the it's the longer car that comes with like a little road vehicle where you can take out of it and it goes and fetches the apples and all that stuff and it's a it is a very very weird pack to say the least but anyway the design of that apple orchard car is remarkably similar to the design that we have for Glenn here the only thing that here the Japanese train did see how it's elevated on this one side it is elevated over here but here the Japanese train came and cut that off because Glenn's front here is uh, taller than it is in the back so underneath you can kind of see the leftover purple paint and then this part up here the top part is just all plastic that is the remains of the original apple orchard cart so underneath we have Glenn by here the Japanese train aka Matt and you can kind of see the leftover purple paint there so we have Thumper's face that goes on the front there and really the only other thing that here the Japanese train did he uh, repainted it red made it all nice and shiny and then this was the part I was confused about I wasn't sure what he used for the boiler so I'm going to take a look at uh, some notes that he sent me he says Glenn is actually somewhat of an evolu evolution from the original one meaning the one he made back in 2015 he wanted to make mine as TWR. He uses the word TWR kosher as possible, which I like. That's why he removed like the 3D buffers from mine and made it a lot more simple. He said he used more wood components to make the boiler on yours because his was actually just a giant plastic piece that he had laying around. So I'm not really sure. I can't imagine, like I can kind of see, I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, that does look like wood in there. It's obviously been painted over. Um, but whatever this piece used to be, I wouldn't imagine it if it's a combination of a couple of different pieces put together. It looks like Glenn's boiler. I mean, you know, there are far more detailed customs out there of Glenn, but for a wooden railway series like mine, this is absolutely perfect. He got the color just right, the gold on top. It looks really, really nice. And then the one obvious part that I haven't pointed out is the Lego brick sitting at the front here. Uh, I think that's kind of funny because I'm always so, you know, pro TWR everything. And, you know, I don't really, I don't use Legos in my series at all, but it is kind of a funny piece, but you need something just exactly like this piece sitting there. Otherwise, you have this blank area and it's like, okay, Glenn's an engine, but he doesn't really look like he's ready to go. So I don't mind that Lego piece right there. It's actually kind of funny. Um, but yeah, on here, the Japanese uh, Japanese trains version, he used these like Lego stud pieces at the front for buffers, which is really, really nice. However, I thought that would have been a little bit too obvious. Like, oh wow, 3D buffers, like totally not Thomas Wooden Railway at all so uh, he didn't include those on mine but honestly like that's pretty much it guys I want to say he maybe came in with like uh, some gold paint I'm guessing maybe a gold marker and he cut a de uh, the detailing there the one on this side and the one on that side and overall, guys, that's pretty much it. So there is a version of Glenn in um, American merchandise form. They did make a Trackmaster Glenn back in 2015 when the Adventure Begins came out. I do have that Glenn, and of course the proportions are all out of whack because mostly all the engines are. But it is a nice piece, and it's actually one of the rarer, more recent uh, Trackmaster engines. So they get the face right, but the problem with those Trackmaster engines is that you know they all have to be like the same size, and they have to 
fit under tunnels and everything. So um, their their uh, parts and pieces get all distorted in the lengths and everything. So it's it's good for what it is. Um, but I much prefer something like this where you can actually see like the crevices and the highs and the lows of the model. Here the Japanese train did a fantastic job. I absolutely uh, love this. And I just want to give once again a big uh, thank you and a shout out to him. And it's so funny, you know, we if we didn't have Thumper, maybe Thumper does have a use after all because Thumper only appeared in like one episode, maybe two. And, you know, he got merchandise and stuff and we're like, what the heck are we supposed to do with Thumper? And then like... 15 years later, Thumper finally, you know, has a purpose. So yeah, if you're looking to make a Glen custom, I'd say the one thing you definitely need, everything else is kind of up to your interpretation, but I'd say by far, unless you want to go the custom making face route, by far the best face out there is Thumper's face. You could try to be really, really risky and try to make it rectangular by cutting it or something like that. But man, that's your, especially up top here, you have a little bit of room on the bottom here where you could draw like a, a straight line and you could just very, very carefully come along and cut it or file it down. But up top here, the eyebrows are very, very close to the top. And once you start taking those eyebrows off, it's gonna be uh, tough to get them back. So um, I love how this turned out. As far as Glenn goes, in my series, guys, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, a lot, I like to introduce characters here and there, not to overload you guys. Uh, but Glenn is kind of a cool character. I'm guessing he would have a very similar story, you know, to what he does in the TV series right now, where he kind of works on the, the Earl's, um, you know, Castle Estate Railway. Um, but it's so funny because he is like a really old engine, and he and Steven, you know, would have some hilarious moments together. So, yeah, that is Glenn. I'm very, very happy with how he turned out. He just looks fantastic sitting here at Farquhar Station, and I, I couldn't be more pleased. So um, let me look at my notes one last time. Yeah, that's really all that here the Japanese train sent me. You know, it's just that when you take a look at his, you'll notice some, some differences, but he wanted to keep um, mine as TWR-esque as possible, if that makes sense. Basically, you know, he wants to keep it simple enough so that it doesn't stand out when you, you know, put it next to Thomas or Gordon or something like that. So that it's, you know, there are some fantastic models of Glenn out there. Um, the one off the top of my head that I think of that I've gotten to see in person is the one that was, um, that belongs to Enterprising Engine 93. I believe it was made by Thomas Wooden Railway Models. I don't know if he has a YouTube, but he's definitely on Twitter. He makes some fantastic custom and pieces and the intricacy and the detailing there is is absolutely phenomenal it's one of the most incredible things and having seen it in person and gotten to hold it and actually gotten to film with it um, is pretty incredible as well but when it comes to my series I like something just a little bit simpler than that and so this uh, custom Glenn made by Hero the Japanese Train is a perfect fit for me so I think that's gonna do it um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below other than that thank you for watching everybody and I guess I'll see you soon